It's actually happening. The big four banks in Australia are exploring potential use cases and economic benefits of a central bank digital currency is a headline that I am constantly seeing in the news. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that the big banks are showing interest in cryptocurrency, especially to those who have been in the crypto game since its beginning. And given the growing attention that's been popping up around this specific topic, I think it's well worth looking into and understanding a bit about what it actually might mean for our nation's financial system in the future. Basically, participating companies that are going to be a part of this trial will be testing a digital version of Australian dollars, which will be issued by the central bank. And this is actually really quite exciting because it will put Australia a little bit further ahead than some of the other central banks around the world where they may not have explored the potential to insert a digital currency in the same way. The trial is going to be focused on two main objectives. The first being to evaluate the adoption of digital currencies and to assess whether it's actually going to be popular among people. And naturally, the second objective is going to explore the benefits that it will offer consumers. And this is where it gets really exciting because I'm going to go through some of the potential use cases now. The first one being the testing of offline payments, where the payment is essentially processed through an offline system, meaning that the transaction can take place even without an internet connection, where the idea behind it is that this can be done through various methods. One example would be through a physical card or potentially your mobile device that has stored payment information on it, where obviously for this one in particular, the benefits would definitely be there for people who may be traveling or living in remote locations. The second potential use case, and it's one that technically already exists, this would just be through the central bank's digital currency in particular, is to trade and sell and buy digital currencies or digital assets as a whole, which is kind of already happening on exchanges today through currencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, just to name two very simple examples. The third potential use case made me do a little bit more research into, and that is the engagement of environmental markets, which in simple terms refers to the purchasing and selling of environmental products and services, where two very simple examples of these would be the purchasing and selling of carbon credits, as well as renewable energy certificates. And then there may be a whole nother swagger of environmentally friendly products and services that would be offered through this initiative. These markets are designed to help companies and organizations reduce their environmental impact as well as engage in sustainable practices. It can also be a way for businesses to demonstrate their commitment to sustainability and environmental responsibility. The fourth potential use case is to facilitate commerce on Web3, which is where we start to get a little bit more technical. Web1, Web2, and Web3 refers to the different phases that the internet's evolution has gone through, including its associated technologies and applications. Web3 aims to enable online transactions between buyers and sellers without relying on traditional intermediaries like banks and marketplaces. Web3 technology in simple terms is built on the blockchain, which is a distributed ledger which securely records transactions, where it allows users to engage in commerce directly with each other through the means of purchasing and selling things with something like cryptocurrency as just one very common example that we have seen been evolving since its inception. As a summary for this one, facilitating commerce on Web3 can be beneficial to both buyers and sellers because it allows peer-to-peer -peer transaction, which is safe, secure, and very fast. And then it also reduces fees on transactions that have to take place because it's gonna remove that middleman being those traditional intermediaries. Number five, selling or purchasing of corporate bonds, which simply refers to completing a transaction where the selling or purchasing of corporate bonds issued by companies takes place. See, when a corporation issues bonds, they are basically making a promise that they will pay the people who invest their money with them a bonus in the form of interest plus their original principal when that bond matures at a future date. As a very dumbed down version, the whole process basically is someone selling someone else something and that transaction that takes place is just making sure that they pay for that bond at that period of time and it's recorded in a secure fashion where the settlement of that transaction can have a number of steps that need to take place in the traditional world as we speak. So the payment verification, the processing fees that come with that actual process of selling and buying the bonds and then transferring the actual bond certificate 
all come with their own wide range of fees, where settling corporate bonds on the blockchain makes this whole process much simpler, where there are a whole bunch of middle steps and middlemen that can be cut out of that mix. And it can be a fast, secure and transparent transaction that you don't really need to think much more on. And there's a system that can be definitely built in place to make it a hell of a lot easier. This is a use case that might not be applicable to the average Joe, but it will be something that will definitely be well worth looking into for the vast majority of corporations that dive into these practices and actually will be end up probably saving a shit ton of money by utilizing these services. Now, lastly on my list for today is trading foreign exchange on the blockchain system. This simply refers to the buying and selling of different currencies using blockchain technology. It is one of the largest financial markets in the world that sees trillions of dollars going through it on the daily, where the benefits, again, reiterating a lot of the benefits already mentioned with some of the other use cases is that it's going to be more efficient. You're going to see faster processing times and realistically, the fees technically should be lower. And the key takeaway from everything I've just gone through is that profits will technically be up. If not, fees will be down. So technically, it's going to be a win-win for most of the people who have a vested interest in using these technologies for the potential use cases that are being proposed. And that is a general overview of what those use cases are. The way that I kind of want to leave today's video is that the influence that blockchain technology will have on our financial systems is still somewhat unclear. It's still very much in its infancy. This trial and this test that's being put in place will definitely take a long time to evaluate the key benefits of the roles that each use case is going to play. In my opinion, for any nation that's aspiring to advance, it is crucial for them to continue developing technologies that are going to help build their financial capabilities. And there's no better way to do that than to investigate the use cases and potential benefits of new and emerging technologies. So I really am glad that Australia is taking the initiative to explore the opportunities that this new technology may bring to our financial systems, which hopefully will feed down to the end users being people such as myself. And that is pretty much all I wanted to talk to you about today. So if you did enjoy today's video, if you learned something, consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below. I really do appreciate the support and I will leave you there. Have a good day, have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.